Hello, it's Father Rich. I'm here in the uh, living room again in the rectory of Our Lady of Peace. Um, here, actually, uh, we have one of our coffee book, uh, coffee table books called The Churches and Monasteries of the Holy Land. And um, it's uh, getting me excited, getting ready to take another trip to the pilgrimage to the Holy Land in November 2023. Certainly encourage you to check out uh, our website or give a call to the parish if you're interested in something like that. But at some point, I, um, in after taking a few pilgrimages to Italy, I said, I need to get people to the Holy Land. Um, and I've been blessed. This will be the third pilgrimage I'm leading there to let people experience the place where Jesus walked and where he lived and to kind of help make the the gospel and our faith even more real. And um, I mentioned kind of a similar piece when talking about the chosen in one of our videos and what a great job that's done for people of making the gospel and the apostles and Jesus more real. And uh, in a musical way, the, the next masterpiece, they say, really brings the gospel alive. And it's called uh, St. Matthew's Passion by Johann Sebastian Bach, known as Bach. Uh, an oratorio, um, a music work that he did in 1727. So this is our 25th uh, masterpiece. And uh, they, I have to admit, uh, they usually go about uh, two and a half to two hours and 45 minutes. I haven't listened to the whole thing, but it's, it's a, a full, uh, portrayal of the Matthew's gospel, the passion of the 26th and 27th chapters of Matthew. And he actually wrote it. And they say he wrote all of his music, Bach. He was a very faithful Christian Lutheran in Germany. Um, they wrote them all to be in the churches and kind of said how he, he would probably be not happy if he knew a lot, most of his concerts and music were being played in concert halls and secular locations because he, he, he wrote them to uh, worship and glorify God and to be done in churches. Um, so Matthew, he had done a version of John's gospel years before, but this time Matthew's is considered really the, the height and the best of his uh, biblical works, which again, most of his work was religious. Uh, a comment that was made at the beginning of this, this chapter by William F. Buckley talks about the greatest single evidence of the existence of God being the work of Bach. You know, he, that's how highly he thought of it. The end of the chapter says in 1977, scientists were looking to send out um, something in a probe to go to other planets or galaxies. And they were trying to figure out what to send to best represent humanity. And this Lewis Thomas was confident in his suggestion that, um, that it would be the complete works of J.S. Bach. Then he hesitated, but that would be boasting. So saying that's one of the best, you know, representatives of what humanity has produced. So this is high praise for Bach and his work, and particularly this uh, the passion Matthew's passion. Um, so some of the things they mentioned that he actually worked with a man named Christian Henrici, uh, who wrote under the pen name of Picander, who did a lot of the the text with the music. They say that Bach had a gift that he could hear something, a sound or something being experienced, and he could make it represented musically and so he had or, or he could see some writing and figure out a rhythm to to portray it he was obviously gifted beyond um, belief in that way um, his passion opera is kind of different handle obviously is best known for the messiah which was about the resurrection Bach tended to, to lean towards the passion and again that's why it would have been done on a good Friday back in 1727 um, when it was first done, the first lines of this piece say, come you daughters, share my mourning. So, and then what is follows is a sustained meditation on the atoning death of Christ. Um, and so the, the way that, um, Bach is able to affect that passion, the, the, the emotion of the passion is, is really, uh, again, remarkable. Um, Bach, again, was a, was a faithful Lutheran. They say he came from a, a musical family. Uh, I was shocked to hear that in a span of seven generations, uh, that his family produced 53 prominent musicians, but he would have been the, the most well-known. Um, he was first a singer, then he played in the, an orchestra, he played uh, the organ, but eventually started writing music, showed a great gift for that. Um, 
He says that in reality, that there was just some of the comments leading the paragraphs are really a good summary. Bach was nothing less than a theologian who worked with a keyboard. That's one way. They talk about the depth of his theology and his understanding. Um, for Bach, as Leonard Bernstein says, all music is religious. Writing it was an act of worship. Every note was dedicated to God and to nothing else. I love the fact they say that he frequently put on his manuscripts the acronym JJ, which was Help Me Jesus, or SDG, which was To Alone, to God Alone the Glory. So a really um, faithful, devoted man. Um, they they mentioned that uh, one of the, again, different commentators talking about how effective Bach was, they say that his effectiveness in bringing the gospel alive and the feelings and emotions to the hearer, that the Swedish theologian Nathan uh, Soderblom once referred to Bach's music as the fifth gospel. So, I mean, just amazing high praise for his music and his work. The next line, Beck Bach was a master at word painting or finding musical equivalents for verbal and written ideas, similar to what I was saying before. Um, and then they say, ultimately, Bach wanted his music to illuminate the word of God to throw light upon it. And so he, he would say the aim and final reason for all music, Bach would say, should be none else but the glory of God and refreshing the soul. So really uh, great stuff. But they say that he was kind of open to other faiths beyond his Lutheran. The fact that one of his, um, what, what's it say? That he had enough in his theology to structure one of his greatest works, which is called the Mass in B Minor, largely around the Catholic Mass. So certainly respected the Catholic Mass as well. Um, he unfortunately began to lose his eyesight. And then I was, again, amazed to hear that both he and Handel, um, the same doctor, basically, in trying to operate on them, losing their sight, for, uh, made them blind. So um, this, this kind of motivates me, again, to listen to more of box music. All this stuff is kind of wanting me to get into this stuff more. But I uh, encourage you to check it out. Again, about two hours and 45 minutes. They say this was the longest of his, um, his pieces on the Passion or the, the Scriptures. And um, it's still obviously performed to this day. So that's Bach, the St. Matthew Passion. Our next uh, masterpiece will be The Messiah by George Frederick Handel. We get to compare the two. We already mentioned um, that was in 1741. So the two of them were contemporaries. We look forward to seeing uh, more, learning more about Handel. So thank you for joining me. Have a great day. God bless.